Okay, so you've just received your raw board. You're making your own fuzz. Uh, this is a prototype for Fuzz Panda. And you want to solder the USB Easy chipset on it. Um, or maybe you're doing this because you want to learn surface mount or you're doing some other project and you're wondering how on earth can you solder pins that a camera cannot focus on? Like, seriously, if I touch it, that's I'm touching like 20 of these pins. And it seems magical. It's not really magical. There's a little trick here. And I'll show you how to do it. It's really easy. What you need is a toothbrush, a wire stripper, cutter, and a glue gun. What? Oh, I'm just kidding. Of course I am. Because you don't need any of these. All you need is a good soldering iron and some, uh, some solder. And uh, <clears throat> I, pr I have two sizes. I prefer to have both. But if you can't, you only ha can buy one. You don't want to buy both. Then, can, then you can use the uh, the thin one. It's really thin. So you compare it to the other one. Okay. Uh, next, you need a piece of cardboard. You can set that on your table because you don't want to ruin the table. Uh, I've ruined many tables in the past. Now, <clears throat> you need a soldering iron with a, with a really fine tip. Look, this is really old, so you can tell. You can use these forever. Um, so this is a really small tip. And what I do, I don't know if you can see that, but if you look at the tip, it's slightly bent at the very end. I'll show you why I do that. Um, I'm going to try to use this magnifier glass, uh, I mean, <coughs> lens. Oops. Oh, maybe you can see it better. Yeah. See how it's it's not straight pin. This should this is a really fine um soldering um iron, but then if you look, I'm gonna try to rotate it here. See that the the end is bent up. Anyway, so you don't have to do that, but this makes it easier. And uh usually over time if you just use a soldering iron it will bend one way anyway, if you use it a lot. But uh I usually just get it new and I do it this slight bent on the tip. Uh, you can buy them bent, but they're like bent too much usually. Um, this is the one I use, by the way. It's Metcal. It's really cheap. It's really good. Um, so now, before I get bored with the with the fine pitch, I usually solder some of the big parts just to see how the boards look like, like a crystal, for example, um, a button, um, a regulator. So how do you place these on? Okay, so let's um, let's solder some some of these little parts. Um, we have over here a, a magnifier glass. I'm really trying to get the camera to focus on this very very small uh, components. So what I do for a crystal, this is a really easy one. I just I use first I use the thick um, solder, not very thick. Look, this one is this is no good. This is horrible. Never use one that's this thick. Okay, there's this, there's this one. And there is the skinny one. I'm not good with numbers. I usually just look at them and I know which one I need. So this one we'll use later. The thick one, you don't need it ever, so don't even buy it. And then you need um, this one that's half thick. So because this is thick, I can use it to push parts. So when I do a lot of work, I can use these two as my hands. So I can use these two to hold the crystal and center it and um, make sure it's it's where I want it to be. And since the pads are really large on here, I can just put the solder iron on the side, and I can touch it with the solder. Okay? And now I wait for like three, five seconds and let go. Now, when I waited, this is very, very important. This is the common mistake everyone I have seen make. Um, they touch the pin as soon as the solder melts, they release. No, you can't do that. This is very bad because the solder just made a bubble over here, but it didn't go under the part. It didn't really solder. You can probably push the part and it will come off. Now, I'm going to do this same thing here. Now that one side is soldered, I can do this and solder. And wait five seconds. And now release. And now this is soldered on. And now you can, seriously, you can, if you push it hard, you can break the board and the solder wouldn't break. This is how strong this is solder down. Um, for, um, for the button, it's the same thing. It's really big. So I'm just going to center it first. Uh, try to get one of the pins soldered. Barely touch it so I don't because I don't want it to move. There's none of the pins soldered yet. Okay, now it's solder melted. Wait five seconds. Let it go. 
and now I can do the rest easily because I know the button is not going to move. So this is in place. Um, now, if you're doing smaller components like these resistors, I'm going to do these some of these later. But let's get something smaller like this part here. How do you get this part? It's really weird. It's not square. So how do you solder such part? So what I do usually, I rotate this, and um, this is what you'll be doing with with all the small parts. Push. Put the part in place, but push it a little bit out. You don't want it in there yet. And then put some solder on the corner pad, or one of the pads, okay? And let the solder melt on there. And now hold the part with the with the uh, solder. And see the spin that we want to solder? I put some solder here. And now I want this spin to solder over here. See it? I hope you can. Now. I'm going to hold the part with the iron on the pad. This will make this pad really hot at the same time I'm moving the pad. So I'm going to hold it from here, move it in place, and see it's melted, waited five seconds, it's good, so let go. So now the part is in place and it's perfect placement. If it's not in the right place, if you don't like where it is, do not, again, do not try to solder any other pin. This is your chance. Once you solder another one, you've ruined the board. If you try to take the part out, you're going to probably make a big mess and not get it right. So I'm happy. I can solder the rest. Let's say I'm not happy. Then again, I use the, this corner with the, uh, with the thick uh, um, uh, solder, and then I use the solder iron to heat up this pad, and I can move it. Okay, let's say, okay, actually this is better now, so now I can, uh, now I can solder the rest, and I don't have to worry about these pads. So, uh, about the part moving, I mean. So this is one, this is two, and three. Good. Now, when you get large pads like this, you don't want to use the tip up down because you need you need a lot of surface from the iron to to transfer you want to transfer the heat down so you go down done